Okay, here we go, Jets fans. What's happening? Sorry. Sorry this is where we are. My name is Green Bean. Welcome to episode 46 of Green Bean's Jets Pod. A somber occasion, I think. I'm trying to dig around and find the positives. I got something for you. So we'll get into that. We're obviously going to talk about Mike White, even some Joe Flacco. We got Elijah Moore. We got Michael Carter. We have the defense. We're going to get into Robert Sala a bit, maybe even some officiating. But before we do, I want to remind you about the contest we have going on right here. All you need to do to enter is hit that subscribe button right here at Green Bean Jets Fans YouTube page as well as going over to Full-Time Coaster Tour on YouTube and click sub there too. Once you do that, you will be entered to win a t-shirt of your choice from the GreenBeanJetsFan.com merch store, as well as a grand prize winner winning that in addition, uh, addition to a Manscaped Ultra Smooth Package. Won't that be nice if that's you? Again, simple to enter. If you want an extra entry, which will double your chances of winning, just go over to Green Bean, the Jets fan on Instagram and follow me there as well. If you want to do it even further, I'm on Twitter as well. Green Bean, the Jets fan. You'll see me. I'm in there. But all that said, we had a rough one. We had a rough one. And this being a week, I took a constructive approach to everything going on. We had a lot to feel this week, a lot to feel good about, a lot to feel apprehensive about, nervous, if you will, but a lot of us felt positive. We did, and we had good reason to feel positive. Our offense put up 1,000 yards in the last two games, which is not what we're used to seeing. Let's just say that. 1,000 yards in two weeks, two separate quarterbacks went over 300 yards. Mike White had 405, and then even Josh Johnson, our aged practice squad insurance policy through for 317 himself with a bunch of touchdowns we had some fun now one of those games we won one of those games we lost but it was competitive which a lot of us like myself you've heard me say it a million times all i'm looking for this year is progress competition i want to start fleshing out these younger players seeing who's a keeper who has potential who's worth developing who's a potential starter getting them their reps Let's see. Let's see who can be a part of this team going forward. And the good news with that is starting so many young guys, obviously, if they are keepers, we're going to be able to have them together for a while, four years at minimum, right? What a change of pace for the New York Jets. That is not what we're used to seeing. We have a new team every two years at best. Think about it. From two years ago, Who's still around? What do we got? Five, six guys? You know, and then the two years before that, what do we got? Eight, nine guys? You know what I'm saying? So even look at last year. It's a completely different squad in many respects. I mean, last year at this time, we were were rooting for a guy named Sam Darnold as our quarterback. That's who we were rooting for. That guy's long gone. It's almost like it's a a different lifetime, if you will. The fact that we're on this perpetual of, you know, this perpetual wheel of changing players, new names, new coaches, new GMs. The idea that we can put something together and have some long-term, committed, consistent players and personnel, it's exciting. So that's the positive of all this. And when you look at where that can go, the team that we played this week, the Buffalo Bills, the division-leading Buffalo Bills, that's a team that has been together since 2018. And they just keep adding little pieces. You know, you lose some guys in free agency, things like that. But they've been able to keep their core together since 2018. They started this thing five years ago. You know, and that's the, that's key. It's so key. So that's what we're hoping for. We're hoping for guys like Michael Carter and Michael Carter, the second and Bryce Hall and AVT and Beckton and all these guys to be our core. So all we need to see is progress. Now, the last two weeks, we've seen that we didn't win the, the Indianapolis game. Okay. But we saw progress, maybe not on the defensive side so much, but we definitely saw it on the offensive side, which going into the Cincinnati game was our big problem because we weren't even able to score a first quarter point going into that game. We didn't score a point in the first quarter. It took Mike White 
to do that for us. And that's the whole issue. We didn't know what was going on with our offense. We go into today after a thousand yards of offense in the last two weeks. And uh, we call this coming back to earth, coming back to earth a little bit. And this is the thing, guys, I'm going to, I'm just going to remind you, I get into all these debates on Twitter and discussions and even arguments sometimes. And my whole key has been like, guys, stop arguing about this shit. Let's just enjoy the happy times. A thousand yards of offense, 37 points, 34 points. You know what I mean? Let's enjoy it because more than likely we're not going to be able to continue this. Nope. People want to yell at each other and that's, I guess it's fine, right? But now we can see the other side as we do settle back to earth. The Mike White dream just might be over. Mike White did have 200. What did he have here? 251 yards, zero touchdowns and four interceptions. And here's the thing with his interceptions. Yes, one, his hand got hit, but the other ones, hmm, not so good. Not so good, buddy. Throwing it into coverage and things like that, just not good. Floating the ball up into space. Yeah, it's a tough one. Now, does that mean Mike White sucks? If my tweets are any indication, yes. Yes, it does. It means Mike White is a loser. A loser. He went from hero next Tom Brady to loser in a matter of three hours. Didn't even really take that long. It's more like an hour. Hour and 15 minutes in, people have made their decision. He sucks. This guy sucks. He's a fraud. It's never been that. Blah, blah, blah. Now, what I will tell you is it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that at all. We saw his potential for the last two weeks. He looked good. Threw for 405 against Cincinnati. Now, that was a trap game. We know this. We're not stupid fans, are we? Are we dumb? I don't think so. I think we're okay. So he throws for 405. The next week he comes out. He throws for 95 in eight minutes, whatever it might be, whenever it might have been. And a touchdown, beautiful touchdown. And he gets injured and we don't get to see it. So seeing him come back this week was kind of nice. Okay, now let's see if the dream is alive. And the first drive didn't look so good. Second drive didn't look much better. Four interceptions later, we get shellacked at home against a division rival. And we now know. So here's the thing. Was he great? Was he great before? And does he suck now? I will venture to say neither. I think he's got potential and he's not there yet. Fair enough. Now, it would have been really nice if he came out and at least played well today. He had a couple nice nice passes. You, you can't take that away. But I think the game was ugly for the most part. This guy didn't look good today. He looked a little nervous. He was getting hit, things like that. He just looked bad. He looked like he was a little confused, like the Bills defense had him. You see what I'm saying? They didn't give our receivers much space at all, even the short stuff. They, they did not have much space. The Bills defense, known for taking the ball away, added to their stats today, and they had Mike White confused and nervous and uh, overwhelmed, I will say. So it would have been nice if he looked good because even if Zach Wilson did come in next next week, what if we just had a guy who who threw for 300, couple touchdowns, maybe a pick? We can settle him back on the bench, and now he's worth something. You see what I mean? We could put a second or even first-round tender. We could trade all kinds of other stuff. Or we just have a competent backup locked in, and it would have been nice as Zach Wilson comes back in. and all. This game took away that fantasy value that we had for him, that first-round tender type of talk. It took that away. Right. I mean, we, we I, you know, I don't think we're going to see a first round tender on Mike White in the offseason. So it just look, it's a bummer. And, and that's even aside from wanting to win the game and all that. And hey, I knew we weren't going to win. I mean, I had a very strong inclination. I put out as much positive vibes as I could. Uh, you know, I never predict losses. I just don't. That doesn't mean I don't think we're more than likely going to. I just I don't like to do that. I, I like to be positive. That's my thing. I like to say, no, 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 24-17 Jets. That's what I'm saying. I can't put out there in writing on a chat or on Twitter or on Jet Nation. I can't do that. I just can't. I just don't. I just won't. 
That's what it is. So Mike White throws for 251, four picks, zero touchdowns. Not good at all. And now he has taken the fall from grace. The Mike White chance. Hey, they were great. Enjoy it. What a great day that was. Against the Cincinnati Bengals at home, only 45,000 Jets fans showed up that day. And that 45,000 got to see a truly special day. Mike White even got his jersey inducted into the Hall of Fame. Inducted, not the right word. Uh, Placed in the Hall of Fame, maybe? So Mike White got his jersey in the Hall of Fame for a historic game. The chants of Mike White, the press conferences, the game ball, all that stuff. This game does not take that away. It doesn't. Like I've said, you know, if we all do get our 15 minutes of fame, wouldn't it be nice if your 15 minutes of fame came with your shirt getting put into the Hall of Fame and 45,000 people chant, chanting your name and the coach handing you the game ball and everybody dumping uh, Nickelodeon slime on your head? Wouldn't it be nice if yours was so beautiful? That's all I'm saying. Now, Mike White coming back down to earth, throwing some picks against probably or arguably the best defense in the NFL. Certainly the most takeaways on this defense. I mean, they, this did not hurt that stat for them. Four more picks. Doesn't mean anything. It just means he had a tough, a tough day today. Now, I, I will say one thing. What it does is that it makes the transition to Zach Wilson okay. You're not going to hear any griping from anybody. Nobody's going to bitch about this one. They're going to say, okay, thanks, Mike White. Settle back into your number two position, which I don't even know if he will because we have Flacco now. Flacco might be the number two quarterback. They might have to protect Mike White on the practice squad. Uh, I don't know how long you can do that or, or what have you. I don't know. They might just leave him out there. I, I Really, I don't know. That's going to be a tough decision. But again, it just means the guy's not... He's not done. He needs to simmer a little bit more. It's just, you know, it's like when you take the pasta out and you, and you think it's done, you take a bite, and you're like, ah, it's still white in the middle. It's got to cook some more. You don't say pasta sucks, right? This pasta sucks. Why? It's got to cook some more. So let Mike White continue. His, his ceiling might be a guy that comes in from the backup position. He might come in for a game, two games, when there's a twisted ankle or something like that, and he might play well. Look at like Matt Moore. Remember Matt Moore? Matt Moore was an interesting guy because he was a a career backup for the most part. He did have his chances to start and all that. But when he was given the opportunity to go and start for a team, he was a free agent. He had the opportunity. There were people calling for Matt Moore to be their starting quarterback. He chose to sign an extension with the Miami Dolphins to be their backup as opposed to going out and doing the whole starting gig thing. Why? Why did he do that? Because he knew. Sure, he's confident. He's a confident guy. But he's a guy who knew his role, probably wanted to elongate his career, extend it as long as he can. He knows, I'm going to go over to the Cardinals or whoever it was. They, they have a terrible team right now. The Detroit Lions are offering them $12 million a year or something. He said, I'm not going to Detroit. I'm not going to go there and be a failure and have everybody hate me and then have to start over again from a guy who's washed up or sucks and try to reclaim my career or maybe even get hurt because he just said, I'm a backup quarterback. I'll come in for two games, three games if you need me. I'll play my ass off. I'm good. And that's it. And I'm a backup quarterback. And that's what he did. That might be Mike White. Who knows? We don't know what's going on. Zach might get hurt again and Mike White comes back in and throws to 415. We don't know. And that's the interesting thing about this. And and I want to caution people. Like I already got a whole bunch of texts and stuff from people rubbing it in my face because three weeks ago I made that is Mike White the next Tom Brady video, right? I made a little six minute video. I said, hey, just so you know, this is the stats and blah, blah. We don't know. People have been waiting for three weeks to jump at me and say, now maybe you'll shut up. Really? Like, and, and we had a discussion on the Jet Nation live stream for the game today. It's like people were gloating that they thought Zach Wilson was a better quarterback than Mike White and they didn't like the hype and they're happy now. Now me, I'm not happy. You want to know why I'm not happy? It has nothing to do with Mike White. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's because the Jets lost. That's why. 
because we looked like crap and we got embarrassed. So I'm not happy. I'm not. I don't like this. When I watch football, I want to win. At minimum, I want to be competitive. I want to be respectful. I want my team to play hard. I want there to be disappointment on the team. I don't want to lose by four touchdowns and then see them the minute the clock to, oh, yeah, they are got their arm and arm around. I, that, that stuff bothers me. Trading jerseys. You could never get me to trade a jersey after the game if we lost. Hell no. I'm walking to the locker room. I'll respectfully shake hands. I'm out of here because I'm pissed. I watched Moneyball yesterday for the first time. I watched a little bit of it years ago and I never got back to it. Isn't that funny? I watched Moneyball... I watched Moneyball for the first time yesterday. And there was a there was a scene in there that made so much sense to me. It was after they got blown out. Brad Pitt's character, the GM, Bean, he was walking down the hallway and he heard music coming from the locker room. And he stopped, turned around, and walked into the locker room and took the a chair and smashed it, turned the music off and everything and he said why is why is there happiness in here? Why are you happy? Why is there la- why is there dancing? And everybody shut up and he waited a second and he said that that is what losing sounds like. It was dead silence. That's losing. And he's 100% right. That's where I come up, that's where I come from. When we lose, I'm pissed. If I have if I'm a player on the team and I've been players on teams, I was never happy after a loss. I was never joking around all that. I've never. Now, I can't control everybody. It doesn't get my doesn't keep me up at night, man. I'm going to tell you that. But these guys seem like they're okay with it. These guys seem like they're all right. So, my whole thing is I want to win. That said, I'm also kind of a realist in this in this sphere of consciousness. I know what I'm looking at. And like, yes, great things can happen and all that, but I know what I'm looking at. So I'm kind of realistic while being disappointed. Don't get me wrong. I want to see Bryce Hall get a pick. I want to see Eccles not get burned. I want to see maybe give some help to Javelin Gidry, the the four foot five cornerback he just put on the outside and is in his first two plays of the game. Of course, they're going to hit him. They're smart. You're not smart. So I'm not happy that the Jets lost. Now, guys that, that get gloaty after that, like I have to question I have to question that. I'm like, what's your deal, dude? Why are you text? The game's not even over and I'm getting DMs. Like, maybe now you'll shut up. Like, really? You've been stewing on that one for three weeks? Is that that accurate? Like, let me tell you something. If the guy that I'm, let's say I'm a big Denzel Mims fan, and I am. I love Denzel Mims. I loved him in college. Loved him coming out. Loved that we picked him. Loved what he did last year. If Keelan Cole's in front of him and Keelan Cole continues to just light it up, do you think I'm upset because it's not Mims? Like, I'm not, if we're successful, I'm happy. It is what it is. I'm rooting for the Jets. The guys that we put on the field, I want them to be happy. Now, if they're choosing not to play a player and the other guy they have in sucks, yes, I have a problem with that. I gripe about that. But Zach Wilson's hurt. His, sec- his number two pick came in and played well for us. What's the problem? I don't know. I never understood the controversy. What is it? <laughs> I never get it. So that stuff I have to question. Like, I'm never happy. You think, like, you guys know I'm critical of Javelin Gidry. I think he's had a decent year, though. So I'm like, hey, man, if you kidding me, an undrafted free agent like Javelin Gidry can come in and play. I'm with it, even though I don't think he's that good. But putting him on the outside and not giving him help with digs, I have to question that. I'm not, look, he's out there. You know, I think I'm concerned about him out there. But when he's out there, I want him to make a play, man. I want, I want him to succeed because he's the guy wearing my colors on the field. The colors and name I root for. Let's be cautious of, cautious of the gloating. Like, who the hell could possibly be happy about this? Just because you're a Zach Wilson guy or, you know, you're even more upset because you wanted Mike White like, because you don't like Zach Wilson. Like, I don't get it. I'm a Jets fan, man. I'm a Jets fan. And we should be disappointed because the Jets sucked. Now, it would be one thing if Mike White was the only reason. Like, I'm going to tell you a secret. It's not. That defense just gave up 45 points again. All right. Now, yes, the offense put them in bad positions, but they were they were toast before that. They were not they, they had a they had a section. That second quarter they looked pretty good until the end, right? They they were coming out. But overall this defense has problems, man. 
This defense has problems. So, Mike White, the experiment is over. This version of it, right? The miracle is gone. He's not Tom Brady. He didn't come in and uh, just look like that natural, like he's just a, a winner. You don't know how or why he does it, but he does it. Like one of those guys, looks like that's not the case. And guess what? Next week, our actual starting quarterback is going to be healthy. He'll come in and he'll play. And that's that. And guess what I'm rooting for? Even though I was rooting for Mike White to succeed, guess what I want? You're gonna, you're gonna, it's going to blow you away. I know this is going to surprise you. I want Zach Wilson to play well. Can you imagine? Isn't that crazy? I'm hoping Zach Wilson throws for 406. That's what I want. Why? Because. Because 406 is better than 405, and 405 is the best we've seen so far. That's why. That's why. So are there positives in this game? I just talked about Mike White. What the hell? I was terrible. That was a terrible game, Mike White. Mike F and White. What happened, man? He's going to say, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I didn't see it. It didn't look as clear. Everything was a little bit faster than, I'm, than I remember the last couple of games. A little faster. You know, I, I kept getting hit and I, I didn't see it coming. I didn't feel it. I got nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a tough, it's a tough day. It's going to be hard to explain that one. And Mike White, I saw numerous times when they showed him on the sideline, he was in that surface looking at stuff, trying to see what it was. You got to give that to the kid. He's working. He's working it out. Not your day. Not your day today. Four picks. Three of them I thought were terrible decisions. And it just is what it is. So what's a positive on that side of the ball? Do we have any? I don't know. I can't think of any. Michael Carter? Michael Carter a positive? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say that young man looks pretty good. Still making people miss. Remember, he came into this game as number two in the NFL at causing missed tackles. Still making people miss all over the place. The guy's a, the guy's a player, and you got to give it to him. And when Elijah Moore got chances, guess what? He's a player too. AVT for most of the game, he's another one. I keyed on him for a, a large chunk of the game. There was only one that I observed, and I still have to watch the game again. There's only one play that I observed that I thought that he got beat. Now, I could be wrong, but he's a player. You can see, even if there's more, he's a player. Those three guys are players. If Zach comes out and ends up being a player, those top four picks in this draft, very good. Good building block types, guys that we can keep, guys that we can depend on. I like them. Other than that, I don't know. Corey Davis, what's up with this guy? What is it, man? What is with this guy? And yes, at the end of the game, he had a couple receptions. Technically speaking, he had five for 93. That is garbage. That is not what the game really was. That's not real. The Corey Davis five for 93 is not real. Most of them were garbage. And he had one really, really important catch. It was gorgeous. Gorgeous exactly when we needed it to happen. And he fumbled it. This guy has had a difficult year. Now, am I, am I, am I going to say Corey Davis sucks? No, I'm not. But something's up with this guy. He has fumbled numerous times. He has dropped numerous times. And I don't know what it is. That was a key play. And you want your vets, you want your leaders to not blow it in those instances. You got enough rookies. You got enough inexperience around. Why is Corey Davis making a huge catch and fumbling it? I mean, you know, I know we didn't mean it, right? Of course not. But that's, that's the stuff. Those are the types of opportunities that we missed. And I'm going to share this with you. There were numerous opportunities for us to stay in this game and even maybe take control of the game. Numerous opportunities. Once the half was over, they came out and put up 21 points in, I don't know, seven minutes, something like that. That, that was it. That was the end. Up until that point, this was a game. This was a game, and it was, a, it was sloppy, but a good game. We were competing, all right? We were keep, you know, when the, when the offense faltered, the defense came in and held them, and then the offense come, and they had that drive going, and they blew it because of a Corey Davis drop. Now, if that, even if we get a field goal there, I mean, I'm not trying to say it, it changes the, you know, the, the, the score all that much. If it's a field goal, we go into the half, uh, 17, six, instead of 17, three, it's not, it's not world beating at the same time. It's momentum. There are, there are, there's reasons to believe, look, we got down there. We just didn't close it out. All that stuff is very, very real. And when you drop the ball and fumble, it's deflating. 
We had the drive. We were doing it. And then wah, 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 and everybody goes, eh. and they start to just lose that little bit of edge. Little bit. So Corey Davis is definitely not a positive. Definitely not. And there's not much else, guys. I, I'll tell you what's funny. Joe Flacco comes in. He's three for, for three, 47 yards with one touchdown, no picks. It's a 158 quarterback rating. What do you think of that? Mike White fans, what do you think of that? Do we really have a quarterback controversy? Will there be people this week clamoring for Joe Flacco to start over Zach Wilson? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, yeah, there are people that are going to say that. Now, do I think that? No. No, I don't. But I think Joe Doug, or I'm sorry, Joe Flacco will actually end up getting the number two nod next week. The guy's proven he can come in and play. I just, I think that's what they did. They, they got a second, I'm um, sorry, they used a sixth round pick for Joe Flacco. And I think we're probably going to see him as our second quarterback. Do I think that his 158 quarterback rating is anything? No, I don't. Three for three? Yeah, sure, it's great. It's better than, you know, one for three, two for three. Of course, it's 100%. But you only threw three passes. That was that was garbage time in the game. All right? Anybody, any competent quarterback can come in when they're in prevent and hit a couple guys. Totally. And the touchdown that he threw was all Elijah Moore. You know that. So and I say it jokingly, but there are going to be people that question whether or not Flacco should stay in. Maybe Zach's not healthy. Or, I don't know. I think Zach, if he's healthy, should play. If he's not, he shouldn't. And I think it probably should be Mike White again. That's what I think. In the event, Zach... Just doesn't look 100%. He's, he's got a little tender, anything like that. You don't start him. You play Mike White again, and you see where this goes. Other than that, Zach Wilson's starting. The only thing not to risk is further injury. That's it. Everything else, you know, we know the offense is, has, has potential now. We know this. You know the offense has potential. Let's put Zach Wilson in there and see what we can do with him. Okay? Now, the, the defense. Guys. I don't know what the deal is with C.J. Mosley. I'll just use one play as an example. There was a play when they ran, the Bills ran around the right side. They scored a touchdown on the play. C.J. Mosley had the perfect angle and the perfect launch time. He left at the perfect moment. He, he read the play, saw the angle, took the angle, and did not make it there. Why? I don't no, but I've been saying it for three weeks for whatever the reason, and I don't know what it is. CJ Mosley looks slow, but he doesn't look like that crisp CJ Mosley that we saw the first four or five weeks of the season. He doesn't look like him. And I've been seeing it week in and week out. He's not making the plays. I want to see CJ Mosley, Quincy Williams, and Jared Davis on the field together. Why so much to Del Del Sean Phillips early? They picked on him. They ran at Delshawn Phillips constantly. They sent the guy where Delshawn Phillips was covering. They sent, it's like they just exploited him. Why is he in the game? So there's a lot to question on the defense. I don't really know. And we've been saying this week in, week out. Our zone scheme, I don't love it. I don't. I saw us. It looked like we went to some man today. Again, I, I didn't re-watch the whole game yet, so it's hard to it's hard to say. But what I'm seeing, it looks like we're we're still seeing the same things with the with the you know the example third and three, and they're given four or five yards of space. Why? I don't know. I'm not sure what that is. Our defensive line has been underwhelming. We had some opportunities today. We missed a few. We got a couple sacks. It's great. But we, it, there were times where we really could have exploited some things, and we didn't. The pick that C.J. Mosley dropped, yeah, it was a hard catch. I'm not going to take that away. But when it hits you in both hands, I'm a big fan, and you're supposed to catch it. I believe in that. I do. When the ball hits your hands, uh, like this, like this, like this, I'm just a believer. Catch it. Catch the ball. You make $17 million a year, yes, that's why. Right, right, right. Yeah, I have expectations of you. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do. So what does it mean, guys? What does it mean, all of it? Does it mean we suck? Does it mean we're raw? Does it mean we're great and we're just blowing it? Is our coaching not maximizing and, and, and squeezing every drop of the lemon? Is that what's going on? I wish I could tell you. 
I will say this. I'm very disappointed with Robert Sala overall. LaFleur has endeared himself to me a little bit the last few weeks. I even liked some of the game today. There were, there were the calls. I was like, what? what is that? But for the most part, I thought the game was called well. I did. Robert Sala to me, I'll give you one example. And why I'm disappointed in Robert Sala as a head coach. While you know, I'm one that's given him plenty of benefit of the doubt. Plenty. Plenty. More than most. Rookie quarterback, rookie mistakes, all those things. And I even called this one today. But I'm just going to say, this is a really, it's a good example of what I'm unhappy about. When it's fourth and inches and you're in the game, Fourth and inches. One penalty that you absolutely cannot have is a delay of game. Can't have it. Unacceptable. Why aren't you watching the clock? What are you doing? What are you doing? You're standing over there. You're not talking to anybody. You're probably listening to the... I get it. But you're not doing much. You're not doing anything. You're overseeing. But... Dude, the play clock is going down. You, Robert Sala, have to have awareness. And if not you, where's LaFleur? Where's Kavanaugh? Where's Mike White? Where's the center? Hey, man. The entire team didn't know. We were down to six seconds when we sat, when we got lined up. Dude. Getting a delay of game. When you are fourth and an inch is unacceptable. We had to punt, punt after fourth and inches without even a a try. Couldn't even try for it. That's what I'm talking about. When you look at things like penalties, and we get a lot of them, man. And it's not one kind of penalty. It's false starts, delay of games, offensive holding, defensive holding, pass interference, unnecessary roughness, delays of game. It's everything we got chop blocks and we i don't you know oh just i don't think there's been a type of penalty that we haven't seen yet when you look at all that and then you got guys running around slow dropping passes no repercussions when you put all that on the table and then add to it that you got a delay of game on fourth and inches with three timeouts sitting in your pocket That's when you start questioning what the hell your head coach is doing. And if I was Joe Douglas, I would literally sit him down and say, you need to explain this one to me. I need to know what you were so busy doing. What were you thinking about that you couldn't see the play clock? That you know we're not going to get it off. You call the damn timeout because that was a game-changing moment. And that's what I'm talking about, about opportunities. We were driving. The game was well in hand at that point. We were there. And that was one of the first drives that we looked competent. And it died. Why? Because we're not paying attention? That is what I'm talking about. We've already heard Salah say, uh, hey, they're, they're playing a kid's game for a king's ransom. They shouldn't need to be motivated, blah, blah. Yeah, I, I, I already disagree with that. Okay, I do. I disagree. What I thought we were getting with Robert Sala was a passion, piss and vinegar guy. You don't have to embarrass people. That's not what I'm talking about. But I want passion. I want you involved in every aspect of the game. When somebody's coming up short, you pull them up. If it's all uplifting, I don't care. I want passion. That's what I thought we were getting. We're not getting that. Then when your your team is getting blown out by 54 points or 51 points, and you only score three, and your reply to that, is they don't need to be motivated? I disagree, sir. I disagree. When you, that, but that all being what it is, when you doing nothing, not speaking, not doing a damn thing on the sideline, but pace, and you don't know that the clock is winding down and your team's not going to get it off, you call a timeout, dude. Your entire team, nobody saw it. Nobody knew what the play clock was at. Nobody. And we lost it. That 
is the best example I can give you on why I'm disappointed in Robert Sala. And as a derivative, I think the defensive play calls, all the all the <laughs> the soft zone, the bad position, not helping out, a guy coming in for his first play on Stefan Diggs, you know damn well that's where they're going. You know it, man. That is a that is a lick your chops opportunity. Javelin Gadry, who hasn't played all day, happens to be short, undrafted free agent playing on the outside where he already shouldn't be. You know they're going there. You cheat. You get some help over there. Bait him. Use it. Bait him. Oh yeah, look, look what's over there. And you you disguise it and you get the hell over there. Nothing. He was on his own twice. They did it once. What is, what's Albrecht thinking? Oh, they, well, they wouldn't do it again. Of course they will. It worked. He just didn't get his foot in. So when you have all that going on and nothing's being changed, that again is because there's no accountability from the top. So I am disappointed in Robert Sala. Now, am I going to tell you he sucks? No. Don't forget, when Robert Sala was in San Fran, when he first took over the defensive coordinator job, the first year they were terrible and everybody hated him. Everybody. San Francisco said, this is not the guy, all the fans. This guy sucks. And he turned it around. So I have to believe this is just part of his process. At the same time, that shit can't happen. And this is why I'm disappointed. And Joe Douglas, who I still have oodles and oodles of faith in, needs to recognize this. And I'm not one to call for people's heads. I'm not. But when you sit down and talk to this guy and he doesn't have solutions for you, when you sit him down and you say, okay, man, well, where are we? What's going on? What do you think went wrong this week? And he goes, I don't know, man. It's just, you know, we just got to do better. And you should take that as a major, a flag to go doing in your head, a big, huge red flap and flick. And when they do that, you go, I got to get rid of this guy. If that's the case, maybe he's got all the answers and you guys are lockstep and you know exactly what's up. Maybe. Maybe you know exactly what's going on, what you're doing. The fans won't understand. We're we're in the middle. This is what we're doing. Like Moneyball, right? They knew where we were. It's going to look like crap. And maybe, maybe that's what's happening. I don't know. But otherwise, when you sit down and you talk to him and go, okay, buddy, explain to me what's happening. How did you blow that fourth and inches call? All right, so what are we going to do? What's your solutions? Talk to me. Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, you know guys, I don't, what, what am I supposed to do? Yell at them? I'm not going to yell at grown men. Like, holy shit. It's okay. It's okay to flub your first ever head coaching hire. It's when you stay the course, just like uh, Steve Kime over in Arizona. He realized quick, I made a mistake. I made a mistake with this guy. And I made a mistake with the first round quarterback that I just drafted. I used a top 10 pick. I got the other. I got a, the, the first overall pick. And I got an opportunity. And I'm doing this. And it happened to work. Don't forget, Arizona, Steve Kime offered Mike McCarthy full reign. And he turned him down before they hired Kingsbury. So don't forget that. Okay? It's not easy out there. I'm just saying. He identified the problem and said, I, don't, I know what it's going to look like, but I got to do it. I can't move forward this way. It's a failure. I've already figured it out. And if that's the case, and again, I'm not calling for it. I'm just saying, hypothetically, that's what we need to do. Because Ulbricht has no answers. And the first few weeks of the season, I thought he had to look good. I thought he looked good. I still love Tony Oden. Love him. But man, it's rough. It's rough. We could get into the offensive line, who I think still looks better, except for Greg Van Roten. That one sack, the, the, uh, the, they called it a fumble. When the ball goes t- 10 yards forward, how is it a fumble? The guy's running and hitting him this way. It would, it would fly straight up or backwards. If it went forward, his arm's going forward. End of story. Why do we have to, un- why do we have to uh, overturn that one? Because it was all day with this stuff. But that was Connor McGovern. The McGovern-Van Roten connection isn't working, man. And I would have used the fourth quarter today to see what Tardif has. And get Van, sip Van Roten. And let's get Tardif his first reps as a Jet. And let's see, let's see what we got here. Because if he can do it, if he looks good, GVR needs to sit. With all due respect, GVR. You need to sit, kid. 
You're getting beat a lot. And people are getting beat up because of it. If you were just getting beat and nobody gets hurt, maybe I would have a little bit more leeway. But dude, people are getting killed back there because of you. And it needs to change. But again, what's Salah doing? Where's the accountability? This guy's dropping 10 passes, fumbling there. Still our starter. About the catch to Crowder. Two feet inbounds, can control. They say, that's ah, not a catch. But it is a catch. Yeah. Here's my flag. No, no, put that back in your pocket. You're not going to review that. We already looked at it. I have no idea what the hell that is. But it was like that all day. Now, the Bills are better than us and they beat us. I'm not trying to say that. But what pours salt on the wound, which is worse, which makes things worse, is the officiating. Our quarterbacks continually get hit. Again, I, I'll draw you back to the Zach Wilson injury. <laughs> the guy dove right at his knee. Not even a call. Solid didn't say a word about it. Nothing. No, what the hell is that? Nothing. Today, the whistle blows. They're punching Mike White. They're hitting him. There was a few times after the whistle was blown, there was one guy still going, the guy on Mike White. Why? Why is that allowed? Then they finally called when at the end of the game. You know why they did that? Because they haven't been called all day. Why not do it? But Salah. He's not doing anything about it. And that Crowder play, I would have lost my marbles on the refs. I might have gotten ejected. I'm looking right at it. It's right there. Turn around and look at what I'm looking at and then explain to me how that's not a catch. And the guy hit him in the helmet on top of that. But we'll leave that aside. So anyway, I'm disappointed with Salah. I just am. Now again, I'm not going to say he sucks. I'm saying I'm disappointed. I don't like the, the, the trajectory here. But we got Miami. We got the Miami Dolphins coming up. And uh, they're, uh, they're a good D2, man. They're not what they seem. They're not schlubs. They're not pushovers. They just happen to be having rocky times. But they are, they're going to play. And we need to, we need to do better than this. Put Tardif in, get the offensive line going. I don't care how you do it, but it's time for Robert Sala to inspire some people. I don't care what you think. The evidence is contrary to what you think. It is time. We have eight games left. If we won them all, that's a 10-win season. <laughs> so, guys, let me tell you, we're here. We're still here. The ebbs and flows and the swings of the pendulum. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about all of it. Let me know what you're thinking. At the same time, gripe intelligently, man. If you're going to gripe, gripe intelligently. Khalil, it sucks. We know where we are. That there are reasons, and it's not the same reasons. It's not everything is not shit. There are reasons. Last two weeks, 1,000 yards of offense. This week... What, 300 total? Something like that? So we got to fix it. Let me know what you guys think. How, how do we fix this? Where do people need to be accountable? I think that's the main issue for me. It's accountability, discipline. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I think. I think we got accountability issues. We have discipline issues. And that's what we're seeing. That's where sloppy football comes from is guys knowing they could do whatever they want and you're not going to bench them. GVR, Corey Davis come to mind. That's who comes to mind for me. Maybe somebody else comes to mind for you. Where's LaMichael Pirine? Ty Johnson, he's got what, six drops this year? Five, six drops? How many times? How many times are we going to watch? The Look, he's had a good, he had great runs. With the ball in his hand, he's effective at times. It's exciting when he has the ball in his hand, but he drops the ball. It's feast or famine. And I'm not a feast or famine guy. I like consistency. I don't like the Otis Smiths of the world who get burned for two touchdowns and get a, two picks. I, I don't like that. It's like Jameis Winston. 33 touchdowns, 33 picks. Nope. It's not, it's not who I sign up for. I want consistency. I want to be on the positive side. I want a guy that when I throw him the ball, he catches it and doesn't fumble. That's what I want. 
So guys like Ty Johnson, Corey Davis, Greg Van Roten, even Connor McGovern, they can mess up constantly and there's no accountability. And that's where the problem is. To me, the issue is Robert Sala right now. He needs to fix this. He needs to figure this out and fix it. Sure, the last two weeks were fun. If you didn't enjoy them while it happened, I feel for you. Because boy, were they a blast. They were. They were fun, man. Not every day you get to see a thousand yards of offense in a seven-day period, almost, right? Not in a four-day period. That was a thousand yards of offense in four days we got to see. I hope you enjoyed it. I do. I know I did. I had a freaking blast. It was great. And I bought into the Mike White. Why not? Sure. Let's try it. When Zach Wilson's healthy, we'll talk about it. You know what I mean? There was nothing to talk about for weeks. So, guys, don't forget about the contest. Don't forget about if you're looking for sports memorabilia, the first link in this description of this very video, the best sports memorabilia site out there. It's called sportsmemorabilia.com. Click on that link. It takes you right to the Jets page. Awesome Jets stuff there. The, the one I got my eye on is the helmet signed by the entire SAC exchange. You don't see that every day. I want it. I'm going to get it, I think. So... Go on there, you buy something from there, spend over 50, you get free shipping, and uh, it helps the channel. So don't forget, you can support me on Patreon. That is greatly appreciated. Five bucks a month if I add value. Great. Give me a tip. There you go. Other than that, don't forget to like and subscribe. Get yourselves in the contest, and let's have some fun. We'll dig this up, man. We're going to get into it this week. We got lots of digging to do. We'll talk about it. But let me know how you feel. Let me know what you think about this incredibly disappointing loss. First half was fine. Sloppy, but fine. Second half, oof. Rough, rough, rough. No pun intended. I hope you're having a decent rest of the week. I'll let it bother you. We'll get back into this, guys. And as always, go Jets. Go Jets.